Hello and welcome to Organic Edible Garden. The moon's now in the last quarter, which is a great time for garden maintenance. And today I've got a few jobs lined up. This was our green smoothie bed, and it did really well, but it's time to come out. Our collards have gone to flower, and the perpetual spinach isn't far from doing so. Our good kale over here, it's got a bit of white fly in, which isn't really a problem, and if you wanted to leave them in, you could feed it out with a bit of neem and they'll still keep going. However, they're coming out along with the celery, which has done really well this year. We've had a lot of rain and it's just gone for crazy. I'm gonna chop these out, use them in green smoothies, and give the rest away. Then everything will come out this bed and I'm going to put a lot more compost and fertilizer in because these guys have rubbed all the nutrients out the soil. After that, this will be my new zucchini bed. I've planted a dahlia bed here. The dahlias are really good for your beneficial insects, but also they attract your bumblebees. And I need those bumblebees to pollinate my beans. And my next task today is doing my green manure crop. In this case, it's a lupin bed. And by now, the flowers have started to come out, so it's definitely time to dig it over. One of the biggest problems, of course, it's grown through the net now, so I'm going to have to pull this up through. If I rip the plants out, it doesn't really matter because they're going to get chopped up anyway. The next thing we have to do is just remove the hoops. The next task is just pull them out. And we just pull them out and lay them back on top of the soil. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to chop this up a bit and I'm going to use my trusty old spade. But I'm going to sharpen it first because the sharper it is, the easier it'll go through the lupins. I'll just use the sharpening stone and then sharpening it by doing circles on a 45 degree angle. Now it's nice and sharp. Now I'm just going to chop through these lupins. Once that's done, all we need to do now is get a fork and give it a good fork over. That brings more air into the soil and helps everything break down a lot quicker. There's no need to dig the lupins in. Just by forking it over, within two, three weeks, they'll break down back into the soil. Then lastly, I'm gonna get some just general garden lime. By putting it on soil, not only will it help it break down quicker, but we're gonna add a good dosage of calcium. Codling moth is the bane of any organic grower's life when it comes to things like apple and pear trees. So we're going to make a really simple organic codling moth trap, which needs to be set before the buds burst. The first thing we're going to start with is molasses, and about a half a cup of this is enough. And the second ingredient we're going to add is a cup of cider vinegar. And it's got to be cider vinegar for this. Mm. 
The next thing we're going to add is about five cups of water. It doesn't have to be exact, but enough to dilute it. You've got the sweetness of the molasses and the sour from the cider vinegar. Then the last two ingredients are just little amounts. It's just a bit of dishwashing liquid and only a few drops are enough. This helps it all stick together. And then finally, a few drops of ammonia. What this does, it releases the vapour of the apple cider vinegar and attracts the moths. And now they make the trap itself. It's really simple. You just need a two litre milk bottle and a knife. And we're going to cut two circles either side. This way the moths will go down, stick to the molasses and they'll get trapped. Maybe using a pair of gloves would be sensible at home. As you can see they're not perfect circles but I don't think the moths are going to mind. The next thing we do is we pour some molasses into the bottom of the milk bottle. Probably about an inch and a half or two inches. Right, now it's done, it can be hung up in the tree. In a bucket like this, we'll probably do at least three to four coddling moth traps. In a tree this size, probably just one coddling moth trap is enough. But if it's a bigger tree, maybe three or four would be better. The other thing is, we want to start tying it up. And we want to tie it up at a height that the moths fly. So roughly about this high in a tree this size. We're also using a really soft t-shirt material because we don't want to damage the tree. So we're just going to tie it up in the V of a branch first. If you spill some or it evaporates because of the hot weather, you can always top up your coddling moth traps during the season. Then we'll get a second piece of string and we'll pull it tight. We're going to tie into another part of the tree. This is good so when the wind blows, it won't swing around too much. And now's a really good time of year to prune the subtropicals. In this case, we've got Fijoa trees that are getting really, really dense. The Fijoas are pollinated by birds, so the birds need to be able to fly into the tree to do the pollination. So we're going to take the centre branches out, so it lets light and air in as well. We're going to take the lower branches off. Not only are they really spindly and get in the way of the lawnmower, but when the fruit's on, it actually weighs the tree down and they drag on the ground. And it's stopping the light going into the understory. I've got things like comfrey and cleavers growing really well here and a bit more light would help those guys. There's some jobs that are too big for the loppers, so I'm going to use a saw. I've opened up the centre of the tree and I've only got a few small branches at the bottom. But don't worry if you over prune it, because it only fruits on new season's growth. So whatever growth will come out now, they'll have the flowers and fruit on it. Now that it's all open, that's about all I'll take off this year. The only thing to do now is give it some fertiliser. And when we put something around it, we're only going to put it around the dripper line because that's where it feeds from. Mm -hmm. 